Okay, so we're going to look at an example of uh, power factor correction. And for this example, I'm just going to consider a simple circuit where we have a voltage supply, which I'm just going to call VS. That's going to be our reference phaser in our system. Uh, and that voltage supply is going to be supplying power to a load, which will simply comprise an inductance in series with a resistance. Um, so I'll call the resistance OR and I'll call the inductor L. And the supply current then is going to be IS. So the whole idea with power factor correction is that uh, what I'm going to call here the load impedance um, is a mixture of resistance and reactance. So the reactance in this case uh, is contributed by the inductor. And the effect of that uh, is to create an angle between the current phaser and the voltage phaser, uh, which means effectively that there is a time delay uh, between the current waveform and the voltage waveform. So where the peaks occur in the voltage waveform, they'll be a little bit ahead in time uh, of the current waveform. So both of these uh, phasers represent sinusoidal waveforms. So a sinusoidal voltage, I'm going to give it a specific value, although that doesn't actually um, feature in the calculation that I'm going to do in this specific example. But just to put some specific numbers on it, I think can help to picture it more clearly. So what Vs is, uh, in this case, is um, 24 volts. Or MS, that's the magnitude of the phaser VS. And the frequency of the waveform, in this case it's an AC supply of course, so I'm going to give it a frequency of 50 Hertz, so like mains electricity uh, frequency here in Ireland. Then the current phaser <coughs> will also be sinusoidal. Um, it'll be in units of amps. We don't know what size it is unless we know what R and L are. Um, but assuming L isn't zero, then one thing we can say for sure is that IS will be out of phase with uh, VS. So there'll be a phase shift between them, um, and it'll depend on the value of this impedance uh, of these of these elements here. So the basic idea in power factor correction is you're trying to get the current in the load perfectly in phase with the voltage, uh, because that's when you're going to get the most bang for your buck in terms of the power transfer from the voltage source into the load. Every amp that you draw you'll be getting the maximum value out of it in terms of power. And the way that we're going to do that is we're going to try and make the load impedance here look like a real impedance or basically like a resistance. And we're going to do that by adding in a compensating capacitor here in parallel with the load. And I'm going to uh, call that C. So I'm going to rely on a couple of things here, uh, which it's probably useful to revise at the start. So I'll be converting each of these elements into an impedance, and then I'll be combining them into equivalent impedances. So just to remind you, the impedance of a resistor, which I'll just write as Z or, uh, is just equal to the resistance. So in other words, the resistor is a very simple impedance. It's just equal to its own resistance. However, for the inductor and for a capacitor, the impedance is frequency dependent. So they um, they are written as follows. ZL, the impedance of an inductor, is equal to J, the square root of minus one, times omega, which is the angular frequency of our AC uh, electricity, and L, the inductance. So J omega L, that's the impedance of an inductor. We normally write impedances using the letter Z. So Z or is the impedance of the resistor, ZL is the impedance of the inductor, and ZC, which is the impedance of uh, a capacitor, is equal to 1 over J omega C. And as I mentioned, omega is the angular frequency in radians per second, so it's just equal to 2 pi times F. So if F is the frequency in hertz, which in this case is 50 hertz, um, that means the number of cycles per second. So 50 hertz means 50 complete cycles per second. If you think of each cycle as one complete rotation around a circle, uh, that's equal to 2 pi radians. So there's 2 pi radians in a complete uh, revolution. So the number of radians per second 
is 2 pi multiplied by the number of complete cycles per second, which is f, 50 hertz in this case. Um, also, uh, just to be clear, j here is the square root of minus 1. So what a mathematician might write as i in electrical engineering, we call that j uh, simply because we're using i already to represent currents. Okay, so, so far so good. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to transform uh, all of these into impedances. Um, so let's just redraw the circuit. Uh, this impedance here is going to be Zc, the impedance of my capacitor. I'm going to put in a single impedance here representing the inductor and the resistor, which are in series with each other. So I'm going to call that Z load. So the load in this case is the electrical circuit that we're supplying electrical power to. So this could represent a machine or a factory or anything really. It could, it could be something that's uh, absorbing electrical power. Um, and we are going to uh, represent that with the variable Z load here. So what said load is equal to, in terms of our original uh, circuit elements, is it's equal to OR plus J omega L. So OR is the impedance of the resistor, J omega L is the impedance of the inductor, and because they're in series I just add them together and that's what uh, Z load is, that's what I'm referring to as Z load. Okay. Now the next step that we're going to do is we're going to combine both of these impedances which are currently in parallel, we're going to combine them into a single equivalent impedance. Just write in Vs there and Is. So my final simplified circuit is just the following. So I'll call this Z equivalent or ZEQ. There's the current IS, voltage VS. And what ZQ is equal to is it's the parallel combination of ZC, the impedance of the capacitor, and Z load, the impedance of our load here. So initially I'll just write that as ZC in parallel with Z load. So these two vertical lines here can be used to denote two elements in parallel with each other. So that's what Z equivalent is going to be. Now uh, just like resistors in parallel, since Z equivalent represents the parallel combination of these two, I can write 1 over Z equivalent is equal to 1 over Z load plus 1 over Zc. So just like resistors in parallel, where you would have 1 over R equivalent is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2, in this case I've got two parallel impedances and I'm combining them into a single equivalent impedance Z equivalent. Okay, so far so good. Now the basic what, the basic idea that what we're trying to achieve here is we're trying to choose a value of C such that the overall impedance Z equivalent uh, ends up real. So given uh, values of R and L, we're trying to design uh, a capacitor value here which will exactly cancel out the imaginary part of this impedance here so that overall we end up with ZEQ equal to a real value. That means the whole thing is going to look just like a resistance even though there's actually a capacitor and an inductor in it. So we're trying to choose C in order to end up with ZEQ real. So in order to do that I'm going to take this equation here and I'm going to rearrange it slightly. So um, let's just move this over to here. And I'm going to rewrite it as follows. I'm going to say 1 over ZEQ minus 1 over ZC equals 1 over Z load. So I've basically I've just subtracted 1 over ZC from each side of my equation. And 1 over Z load is simply equal to 1 over R plus J omega L. So I have Z load here. It was just equal to the series combination of the resistor 
and the impedance of that inductor. Now what I'd like to do is I want to be able to split this into real and imaginary parts. So this, the, um, the denominator here is a complex number. So one over a complex number will itself be complex. And I want to split it out into real and imaginary parts. So the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to multiply the numerator and the denominator by the complex conjugate of the denominator, which in this case will be or minus j omega l. So let's go ahead and do that. Or minus j omega l over or minus j omega l times or plus j omega l. So I haven't changed the value of my number here. I've just multiplied above and below by the same thing, or minus j omega l. But what I'm trying to achieve is I'm trying to rewrite this number so that I've got a real denominator and then separate real and imaginary parts in the numerator. So that is equal to or minus j omega l. And if I multiply out the two terms uh, on the in the denominator, we wind up with or squared plus omega squared l squared. Now you'll notice that everything that appears in the denominator here, or squared, omega squared, l squared, they're all real numbers. So although I have not real and imaginary parts in the numerator, the whole of that denominator is real. As a result, I can write out my equation again, 1 over z eq minus 1 over z c is equal to, and I'm going to split this out into a real part and an imaginary part. So the real part is just or over or squared plus omega squared l squared. And the imaginary part is minus j omega l over or squared plus omega squared l squared. Okay, so the good news here is that we've got a real and imaginary part on both sides. Um, just to explain why that is, z equivalent, we're trying to solve this equation for the situation where z equivalent is real. So 1 over a real number is also a real number. So let's just mark that as real. 1 over z equivalent, that's a real number. Um, Zc, just to remind you, is 1 over j omega c. So that's the impedance of any capacitor is 1 over j omega c. And that's always an imaginary number. So the impedance of a capacitor must be imaginary. So this is imaginary. I'll just write it as IMAG as an abbreviation, but uh, what I mean is that it's imaginary. Okay, this term here, or is real, or squared is real, omega squared is real, L is L squared is real. So or is just the resistance of our resistor, omega is our angular frequency in radians per second, that's a real number, and L is the, in, the inductance of the inductor, so it's a real number. So this whole thing here is real. Okay, and then my final term here, minus j omega l over r squared plus omega squared l squared. Well, if you look at the bit in the fraction here, omega is real, l is real, r and r squared is real, omega squared is real, l squared is real. So all of that's real, but the whole thing is multiplied by j, the square root of minus one. So all combined together, that makes the whole thing purely imaginary. Okay, so we've got a real part and an imaginary part and we've got a real part and an imaginary part. So each side of our equal sign is split into real and imaginary parts. So we can we can therefore infer that the real part on the left is equal to the real part on the right, and the imaginary part on the left is equal to the imaginary part on the right. And that's in fact the bit that we're interested in here is the imaginary part. So we've basically, we're able to boil that down to uh, the following. I can say, take just my imaginary parts. So, so I'm going to take those imaginary parts minus 1 over Zc equals minus j omega l over r squared plus omega squared l squared. Now I can cancel the equal sign, or sorry, excuse me, cancel the minus sign from each side there. And I'm gonna continue just up here. 
So what I've got now is 1 over Zc is equal to omega L over R squared plus omega squared L squared. Um, now Zc is 1 over J omega C. So 1 over Zc is equal to J omega C. There's J omega C equals omega L over R squared plus omega squared L squared. Um, and sorry, that's all multiplied by J. So you'll see that JW, or sorry, J omega appears on both sides. So I'm going to cancel that here and here. And that leaves me with my final expression for C, which is C is equal to L divided by R squared plus omega squared L squared. And this is a formula that we can use to select the value of C. So in our original circuit, uh, we're given a load which is made up of a resistance and an impedance in, or sorry, an, a resistance and an inductance in series. Uh, and the problem that we set out to solve was to choose a value of C that would give us a total combined impedance which is real. So we're trying to make sure that the whole thing appears like a resistance, a pure resistance. And that will mean that the current IS will be uh, perfectly in phase with the voltage VS. So the two phasers will both be, there'll be no angle between them. Um, so we were trying to choose a value of C that would achieve that. And this is the formula that will allow us to do that. So if we take the value of L or an omega, we'll be able to calculate a value of C which will perfectly cancel the reactance in the load, as a result of which our current and our voltage will be perfectly in phase. Now it's probably worth mentioning as well that we could also equate the real parts uh, from our equation here on the left, and that will tell us what the equivalent uh, impedance is going to look like. So it's going to be purely resistive, and the value can be calculated from this. Uh, just as an aside, it's Z equivalent is going to be equal to R squared plus omega squared L squared all over R, which is equal to R plus omega squared L squared divided by R. So you can see that Z equivalent, which is purely resistive, uh, it's, it's a real value, uh, but it ends up being slightly bigger than the original resistance that we started out with. So uh, the original resistance which appeared in the load was R, but we've got an extra bit added onto it which is related to the frequency and the inductance and the resistance. So the Z, Z equivalent is actually going to be bigger, a bigger resistance than the original R, but the main thing is that it's real, which means that the current will be in phase with the voltage.